And this is Tyler again with Phoenix Custom Systems. I'm going to show you how to uh, do a few features with the V3, the MVMS uh, V3, and uh, how to do playback and some live view things and some different features on here today. So uh, we're in main view right now. Um, so if you just double click on any image, it'll bring it up in your clear view and uh, it will go from your substream to your mainstream, which will give you that nice, clear, crisp shot. Um, from there, down here, you have your little magnifying glass, and you can just drag and drop, and it will expand that area, kind of like your pinch to zoom. Um, you also can do it, if you have a mouse, you can use your wheel to go in and out. Um, down here, if we hit our gears in this bottom right, um, it's going to bring up how this stuff is going to record. This is very important before you start recording and saving uh, images. You know where it's going to and you have all your settings correct. So again, it was in that bottom gear. It's going to be defaulted on live view of playback. Picture format is JPEG, which is fine. You do probably want to change this video format to AVI. That way you can um, play your videos uh, with uh, your uh, Windows Media Player. Um, or other players instead of having to have a special player for it uh, as if it's an uh, mp4 um, format you can also uh where it says not merge we'll hit that and we're going to go to one gig that's merge your download files into one gig big uh, uh, storage instead of having a bunch of cut up uh, uh pre-plays for you and uh we want to enable wheel for zoom and then we'll hit save and then we actually want to go back down there and do another setting we're going to go into um, images if you didn't watch my other video if you have the vca rules enabled it's going to show your line cross and your um, detection areas so if you don't want to see that you just want to make sure you have that turned off like that um, let's go over here to files this is where it's all going to save so you want to choose where it's going to save uh, that way it's much easier to find so we're just going to open this. You guys can save it wherever you want. I'm going to go to my PC videos. Um, and if you want to do, you can create a folder that's uh, your recordings or your date or however you want to do it. But I'm just going to save it for this video like this. And we'll do the same thing for uh, the pictures and the videos. And then again, hit save. All right. So I'm just going to uncheck my uh, digital zoom. You have to make sure that you uncheck it. Uh, if I was watching this live and I wanted to see uh, if I wanted to capture a picture, I have this little clip right here where it will actually snap a picture and it's going to save it to that folder that I just chose. Um, and then you can also do recording. So if you're watching something and you want to record it right then and there, you can hit start recording and it's going to start recording that clip until you hit stop recording. Um, uh, another feature that we have, if we right click, uh, if you have audio, let me go to a camera that has audio first. Um, this one back here. So if we right click and then we go to audio on, it's going to turn on our audio if you have a microphone attached to this camera. And then again, to mute it, we just go back here and hit mute. Um, if we want to view all the cameras again, another way to do it is just to drag and drop. And it will bring up all our camera views for us. And with inside of here, if you want to organize these or these aren't organized how you want them, you can simply drag and drop and they'll switch positions. All right. Um, auto switch, which is kind of cool. If you want to use that, you can just say all cameras. You have multi-screen auto switch and you have single camera auto switch. So let's say we wanted to start here. And um, we're going to go to auto switch so we'll hit this right here this little um, refresh looking button right here oh that's all cameras let me get off all cameras i want to go a single so we'll start the auto switch there that way i can see them all now you see down here where it says 20 seconds so it's going to be 20 seconds in between each picture if we want to change that, we actually have to come down here, hit this uh, little X where it says stop live view, and then come over here and then do a different time frame if you want. So we'll just choose five seconds, then we'll come back up here and hit this little cycle. 
and then it will start doing those intervals in five seconds and it will just go right down from one to the other. If you want to skip cameras quickly, you can hit uh, one of these buttons here, this one down here, and that will make you uh, go forwards or backwards. And then once you're done with that, you can just go back up to resources, come over here, drag and drop all your cameras, and they'll all pop up for you again. Uh, let's go into playback. Top left, the four little squares, if we hit that, we want to go to remote playback. All right, so from here, we'll go ahead and pick a camera. We'll just say the side again. We come up here to our calendar. You can only do seven day intervals, so we'll just do the 27th to the 28th for this video. Hit OK, come over here and hit play. And it's going to start uh, give me the views that happen from there. Again, we can enlarge it by double clicking. Down here is our time frame. All these ticks are motion. Uh, it was raining, I guess, at night, so it picked up a lot of movement. Um, so if we skip ahead where we have daylight, you'll have a lot less chunks. Um, so if you see something that you want to record, you have a few different options in doing it. Um, one of the ways is you can right click and hit start recording. And it's going to start recording from the time that you hit that from what you're watching. And then you can hit stop recording. Um, and it will download it to the file that we selected. Um, the way I like to do it is I like to hit download. And then from there, um, I'll come in here and I can either pick different days or go in here and actually choose my exact times. And then I can name the file. And then download player. If you have it downloaded, then you just want to uncheck that and then hit OK. And again, it will download to the file that you selected earlier. Um, if we want to do a... Um, a more extensive search if we open this up right here <clears throat> we have event playback so if you had different events um, you could search like that to where uh, if you had motion or if you had line cross VAC detection um, you could uh, search like that which makes it a little bit easier so um, another way to do it, we're back in here, at regular camera playback, not event, not POS, not ATM. We're at regular camera playback. If we go up here and right click and at the bottom right here, it says VAC search. And then we can do uh, enable by motion, line cross or intrusion. So we'll just do motion for this one and we'll hit this. And then we'll just make an outline right here. It's going to do a search for us. And what it's looking for is any motion in that box right there. Um, it's going to bring up recordings from that. So it just makes it easier if you had a car stolen here or someone did vandalism over here. It makes it a lot easier to be able to see um, what's going on. Right now I have it times eight. That's why things are moving so fast. So you see at the bottom where I'm clicking, um, that'll actually increase or decrease your speed. And you can actually go slower. You can go down to a sixteenth of um, per frame if you're trying to slow things up. Um, so again, let's say we go to this frame here and it's going to go ahead and play that instance where it was picking up motion in this area over here. Uh, once you're done with that, you can just go ahead and close that out and you're good to go. All right. Next thing I want to hit on is, uh, we want to go back in up here to this four squares. I want to go over to device device management. And then I want to hit this little gearbox here for remote configuration, basic settings. And this is a new feature that they have with this software, which is pretty neat. Um, so this actually pulls up the configuration uh, as if you were looking at it in uh, Win or not Windows, but uh, Internet Explorer. Uh, this is what I use most of the time when I'm setting up systems. It's much easier to navigate. So you have full capability and function over your NVR and DVR here. Uh, the biggest thing you're probably going to be using is going to be your user management where we can go in here and add users, uh, delete users, and modify. So what we're going to do is we're just going to hit add. You're going to type in their username, whatever you want it to be, whether you want them to be an operator or user. You're going to type in your admin password and then their password twice. From there, you can come down here and give them permissions um, on what you want them to be able to view. So if you only want them to be able to do um, local live view um, or just live view and playback, in general, we want to do local, and then you'd want to also do remote. So if they're on an external IP, 
then they'll be able to do it. Or if they're on the internal IP, they'll be able to do uh, remote playback and live view. Now, if you only want this person to have operation and the ability to see certain cameras, you can go in here and select which ones you want him to have. So whichever ones are checked, uh, those are the ones that they'll have access to. Once you do all that, make sure you have to do it for local live view and local playback as well as remote if they have remote access. After you do that, you come over here, hit OK, and they will be created. Then you can log them into the system like that. And remember, when you're doing this um, on this program, uh, if you go in and import settings and export settings and it has your user information there, it's going to give them admin rights. So you have to make sure that you um, modify the login information that they have. And I'm going to show you how to do that next. Um, so if we go up here to this uh, three little lines, the menu, we hit this, and then we hover down to uh, systems. We have export configuration. So if we hit export configuration, <clears throat> um, so what you'd want to do is plug a thumb drive into your PC, and you'd want to find that thumb drive. Once you get to that thumb drive, um, you go there, name the file, and then save. Once you do that, you'll take your thumb drive out of uh, your PC, go put it into their PC with the program already up, <clears throat> nothing else done to it, just the program installed. You come up here again, go to system, and then import. So then again, you'll find um, you'll find your um, thumb drive and upload the file, whatever you named it, hit, hit open, and then run the file. Um, once that's complete, you'll have to shut down the program and then reopen it. Once you reopen it, all those configurations will be in there, however you set it up. That way you don't have to go in there and individually name all the cameras. And if you have multiple locations, it's just much faster than having to do each machine like that if you have multiple users. Um, I think that's pretty much it. If, if I'm missing anything, let me know. I can uh, make another video if there's anything I missed, but that's uh, your basic operations of what you'll be using. Uh, please let me know if you need anything in the future.